Hello, hello, Mordimers here. Uh, welcome to another game from Round 10 Tata Steel Chess Tournament uh, in Vegas Z2020. And uh, I cover already uh, Magnus Carlsen game where he won, but this is another very important game. Uh, Alireza Firuzia, 16 years old um, prodigy from Iran, uh, playing under the flag of FIDE. If you want to know why, check this link and I explained that in another game and you can watch that after this game of course uh, so uh, he play uh, against Fabiano Caruana and um, and Fabiano Caruana is the player number two in the world. Uh, he tried to beat Magnus Carlsen last year uh, for the world champion title. So he won um, the, the candidates tournament, a very strong and universal player. Also, if you want to know more about Fabiano, this is another a great um, video about him and about the game where he won in this tournament. Uh, so Alireza Firuzia play as black and his ranking is 2723. Uh, so far he has quite good tournament. He won three games, however, against uh, strong opponents uh, from elite players like Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen. He lost um, games, but he played very brave so far. And now he is facing Fabiano Caruana. Uh, who plays as white and his ranking is uh, incredible 2822 so he is definitely the favorite of this game uh, so without further ado let's see what happened on the board we have d4 by fabiano knight f6 c4 g6 knight c3 and bishop g7 e4 by white d6 and now h3 h3 is not the most popular move here knight f3 is popular bishop e2 is uh, popular so um, just silent development f3 is also very solid move and uh, all of this move gives a lot of harmony for white pieces and they have really really great um, gameplay however h3 is quite less popular alireza just a castle which is obvious in this structure and now we have bishop on e3 and here alireza play a move which fabiano is not familiar with knight c6 and it was developed for this tournament probably but maybe also for others as other Il iranian players uh, played this move as well so fabiano was not prepared uh, but he tried to uh, handle that so he pushed d5 as expected and now we have knight e5 f4 uh, playing with tempo and knight e on d7 and fabiano goes for g4 uh, g4 is quite brave move and uh, we have you know this um, pawn structure um, so white's gonna attack um, very hard here uh, but also white has the problem with the king in the center so have to be extremely careful how to do this attack uh, there are other games uh, in similar fashion where like four pawns attack is played with all these four pawns uh, attack sometimes there is a six pawns attack but it's very rare uh, on the tournaments on this level so alireza here plays c6 we have knight f3 developing and c takes on d5 c takes on d5 and b6 and here Caruana instead of developing another piece for example bishop on g2 uh, to continue he played knight on d4 so preparing maybe to go on c6 uh, pretty nice outpost uh, for the knight but now we have knight on c5 this is also really great outpost for the black knight so definitely um, alireza is uh, well prepared here and uh, knight c6 could be played but but after moving the the queen and moving the bishop uh, white would probably lose the pawn so there is no point um, of doing that uh, we have and also these knights now attacking the uh, e4 pawn so uh, better to queen f3 first defend that pawn and after bishop on b7 uh, fabiano played g5 
G5, which uh, in his interview after the game, Fabiano said it's forcing to play very attractive a sacrifice by Black. And Alireza Firuzia can can go for that line, but he also can go for, for example, uh, Knight on H5. And Knight on H5 is uh, quite annoying. It's not easy for White to uh, create some attacks because this pawn is blocked already. So uh, to rid of this um, this knight, White would have to bring some resources, but it it would take a lot of time to do anything with this knight. Uh, so it's not worth it. Maybe also bishop, but uh, exchanging the light square bishop uh, here probably would not be so attractive for white. But Alireza didn't go for that line. Uh, instead, he sacrificed the knight on e4. And he still play quite fast uh, so far. So he is well prepared for that. Knight on e4 by uh, Fabiano Caruana. And now bishop on d5. So it looks like uh, Alireza gonna win this knight because it's double attack and also it's pinned. Uh, however, Caruana found the way knight f6 with check uh, and attacking this bishop. So knight has to be um, captured on f6. And now we have queen d5 as this uh, bishop stay uh, unprotected. We have a rook on e8 and so attacking the unprotected uh, bishop on e3. And now we have knight c2 defending f g5. And here Caruana uh, doesn't have much uh, choice. He has to hide his uh, king. So he uh, castle on the queen side. We have g on f4. And actually this, um, this pawn can't be taken. Uh, ju just the the, the short uh, show uh, queen f6 and it's attacking the uh, b2 pawn and also attacking the uh, and also attacking the bishop on f4 so uh, white would be in the big troubles so that's not the 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 case here bishop on d4 was played uh, offering exchange of the bishop. So Alireza accept that we have bishop uh, on d4 and queen takes on d4. Knight e6 attacking the queen here and queen has an option of taking on d6 but uh, Caruana decided not to take this and it would be uh, it would give black to uh, too much uh, freedom for his pieces and and this king is still not not uh, ha hidden uh, well enough so queen d2 first and here alireza bring another defender to important f4 pawn it's past pawn so should be protected we have a king to b1 so um, putting the king into the safety and now we have rook a on c8 um, developing move and here um, Caruana said in interview that he was uh, quite sure about his position he wanted to play a uh, knight uh, on b4 and knight on d5 with the plan of uh, bringing the bishop on the longest diagonal and uh, and he said he was sure that he gonna keep this pawn so they not gonna be um, dangerous uh, however here he he found the, the chance to play bishop on b5 first and this rook doesn't have much moves has to move to uh, d8 so uh, it's it's not really the 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 happy rook uh, now he, now it's just watching on d6 so not fully operational yet and here we have knight before as planned um, however d5 was played by uh, Firuzia, so he doesn't allow this knight to stay on d5 and if Caruana try to get this knight, actually it's impossible because queen on f5 check and after queen d3, rook d5 would be played. And after exchanging um, on f5, rook on f5, uh, black stands much, much better because has three extra pawns and white don't have any counterplay. Uh, so um, th that would be totally winning for uh, for black this is why in this situation it's impossible to take this pawn 
uh, and rook h on f1 was played. So bringing the attacker to this um, pawn, we have two attackers already. Uh, and here rook c5 was played, so attacking the bishop, but Caruana want to uh, keep that bishop on this um, on this square, so a4 was played. And here d4, so, uh, so Firuja pushed this pawn just to bring the rook behind the uh, f4 pawn. And now we have knight on d three knight on d3 so bringing one more attacker um, very interesting and now rook on f5 uh, and caruana was uh, very happy after this rook on f5 uh, of course it's extra defender but he said that this rook is totally misplaced so that's not the place for for the rook um, in this game uh, but firuzia has a um, different opinion so now rook on f3 blocking the the past pawn we have g5 so bringing a very good defender a pawn is also always um, the best defender uh, so now uh, looks like position of black is consolidated and they can think how to win this game rook g1 was played and here, this is the very, very critical moment of this game. Uh, Alireza Firuzia could play h5. h5 is so powerful move. h5 would, it would be very difficult for, for white to play anything. There is, uh, there is no clear plan how white can deal about uh, all of this stuff. For example, if white want to play bishop c4 exchange one of the defenders and supporters of this pawn movement uh, then knight g7 uh, black of course don't need to agree and now uh, finding the plan for 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 white would be extremely difficult uh, of course h4 is uh, not playable because uh, black would just push the g pawn and it's clearly if you check this on the engine the engine shows some plans but it's nothing clear nothing like like clear plan where white could play so very complex situation but black would have a lot of um, chances to to attack on the king side and also this king is like pretty well placed it's hidden it can it can it can go on the for example h7 the rook can be brought if needed and uh, you know make the attack on the on the king side uh, but he missed that chance and he played king on f8 and it looks very logical it looks very logical because Firuzia, of course, don't want um, this pawn to be um, to be pinned, and this is why he played that move. But now we have h4, h4 attacking this pawn, and now the pawn can be uh, pushed because uh, White just gonna pick up this pawn. So uh, very unfortunately, and now we have h6, h take on g5, h take on g5. And now rook on h3, so white can play now on the h file. Uh, really, really great for white, but black gonna have a lot of troubles. It's not easy to push this pawn now. So for example, f3 was played in this uh, game. Caruana played bishop on c4. Uh, he want to exchange the defender and uh, supporter of uh, this pawn movement. Uh, however, he had a very clear uh, victory here by rook g on h1. Um, very good move. And even f2 would be played, what Caruana maybe um, calculate um, not deep enough. Uh, but white actually could just sacrifice the knight and after rook on f2 got a very strong attack. For example, rook h8 check and king e7 queen b4 check and now after for example knight on c5 rook on e1 check king d6 and now uh, the motive is okay feel free 
to pause the video and try to find the, how white can win in this situation like uh, very very clearly while i enjoy my cup of tea <sighs> okay you ready so um the thing is that this queen overworks mm, and it's protecting two of the rooks so um queen d4 can be played of course but um, but easier way would be rook takes on d8 queen takes on d8 and queen on d4 check and forking the king and the rook so king c7 and uh, queen would take on f2 so congratulations that wasn't um, very difficult um, puzzles but uh, quite interesting so that was uh, Caruana a chance for playing uh, uh, make the game much shorter however bishop on c4 was played in the game and now we have king on e7 and here bishop on e6 and now black has to play something but but what 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 are the options for example f takes on e6 what would happen white would have queen on h2 and after f2 attacking the rook rook just simply goes to f1 g4 bringing more attackers and now rook h7 king e8 and now queen c7 so um that's very very dangerous situation here and now black doesn't have really much to play if they push uh, g pawn more then of course the the queen can pick it up and then continue the same attack the same way if they move the rook for example on f3 and trying to attack the the knight the knight can jump and and you know that's gonna be another uh story of of uh, checkmating so not really a, a, a great position for black. Black would have played uh, uh, whatever, for example, a b5, but rook can take actually on f2, and after rook takes on f2, knight can take on f2. So the pass pawn is lost. Of course, a queen can't take due to the uh, threat of checkmating. So g3 may be attacking the knight. Knight move on d2 g2 so almost there but now uh rook on g7 and this pawn just gonna die and um, that's much better for example queen uh, if queen promote rook take on g1 uh, queen f7 trying to you know um, defend but then we have queen c6 with check now queen d7 defending but now rook g8 with check king e7 and rook g7 with check and winning the queen uh, and of course it's easy win for white so that's not an option and from the other hand if a queen on f1 is played for example uh, check in this fashion then king can go on a2 and now uh, it's still checkmate here so black would have to go on f6 still uh, but then rook on g8 queen f8 that's the the only uh, move and after rook on f8 king's take on f8 uh, winning all the pieces and uh, actually is nothing to do white uh, also easily win so uh is any other possibilities here for example uh, queen can takes on uh, e6 is it any better let's see but first f2 just push it before so rook f1 and only now queen on e6 it's is it better uh knight f2 could be played uh, defending the rook this is important uh, rook here and uh, for example rook takes on f2 queen takes on f2 and yes queen can takes on h3 so it looks like much better for black but this attack is just uh it's just winning for white for example king d6 the the king is so exposed so even with better material for black it's still losing queen f6 king c7 trying to ex escape but then rook c1 with check 
king d7 of course moving there is it, it's it's gonna be a checkmate so uh king d7 but now we would take the the pawn on d4 king e7 now queen g7 with check king d6 uh, and here queen f6 so again king d7 and now rook d1 king c7 and now queen d8 and winning the game so uh, even black has the the extra material in you know ad advantage in two pawns the situation would be um, uh, impossible to win uh, so here in this situation uh, Alireza Firuja decided to play king on e6 and still uh, Fabiana Caruana play in the same fashion so uh, queen on h2 uh, with the same threats and attacking on the on the queen side and now we have f2 uh, king d7 could be played uh, and after rook on h6 uh, and and then f2 uh, rook could take on f6 and after uh, promoting to the queen queen would take on g1 and rook on f6 queen g5 rook d6 uh, and here knight e5 with check king c8 and then knight f7 forking the rooks and winning the game so uh that's not an option also uh, as you see all these lines and there are much more lines to to show here but it's impossible to show them all uh, but a different approach uh, after uh, king on d7 and rook h6 queen on e7 would be played as well but then rook on c1 rook c8 uh, because this is clearly the checkmating ideas here so rook on c8 but now rook can attack from e1 so queen goes to f8 as queen should uh, should stay on this diagonal it's important diagonal as the as the queen can attack now uh, on d6 so for example uh, queen on f8 and now queen h3 winning the rook and then rook actually can't be defended uh, yes black can take rook on h6 but then queen f5 uh, check king d6 queen e5 uh, now uh, it's similar in similar fashion this king is so hopeless so for example king c6 knight b4 could be played king b7 going somewhere to the corner but now queen d5 with check king b8 and knight a6 with checkmate so is there any other option for example uh, rook to g8 so maybe this would be the idea uh, maybe but queen c7 so still uh, attacking from the queen side now f2 as before rook f1 and now rook on d8 so uh, now the attack on the on the king side is not longer um, an issue but the queen side and black can defend on both sides so for example now rook on h2 uh, just preparing to pick up this dangerous pawn rook d7 attacking the queen queen could go to c8 pinning that rook and king d6, d6 and pinning but now simply takes this pawn rook takes on f2 rook takes on f2 queen e7 and uh, it's still unclear uh, how to play but white stay much much better uh, just it's not so decisive like uh, other other variants so maybe that would be the 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 way to go but it's still uh, consolidate this um, these pawns on the king side probably impossible so so actually uh, here f2 was played by alireza firuja rook f1 and then king d7 so we already see what happened in this um, continuation in similar fashion rook on h6 of course queen e7 by firuzia this actually this variant was played in the real game so sorry about all these uh, complicated lines i show but uh, it's really 
very, very difficult, I think hopeless situation for Black, but Ali Reza still tried to fight. Uh, so here we have Rook on F2, Rook takes on F2, and Queen takes on F2, so uh, Black just lost this important pass pawn, I think the last chance to, um, to get any points. King C8, so uh, taking the Queen to the safety, and now we have a5, so uh, Ali Reza uh, tried to hide the king and Fabiano of course want to destroy the defenders. B takes on e5 and here we have queen c2 with check, king b8, so hiding there, knight on c5 and now the threat uh, is of course bringing the queen to attack but not only from front but also from the flank and defending uh, from that that's uh, almost impossible so for example f6 but uh, but now rook could go on h7 so going to the 7 rank even more uh, dangerous than on 6 rank so for example queen d6 but now queen b3 check queen b6 and now we would have very fancy knight on a6 with check king h8 and for example queen f Three. and of course it's checkmate on b7 so that's not the way and it doesn't matter if kings go on uh, c8 uh, it's uh, it's it's the same queen c4 and there, there, there are no moves so it would be even faster so that's the not the way to play f6 so uh, rook was played on d6 and it looks pretty pretty okay first uh, the rook can go uh, to b6 so that's the some advantage of course uh, but also if the queen go on h2 the rook is also uh, defending here so uh, the king can come and uh, everything looks like would be okay uh, and also this rook attacks the, the rook on h6, so it looks like really great move. And actually Caruana could just go for queen b3, he didn't play that, but actually a lot of moves winning here. So that would be the fastest way, uh, queen on b3. And for example rook on b6, queen g3, so attacking from the flank again, King c8 or king a8 doesn't really matter and now rook h8 and um, th there are no moves because everything is controlled by, uh, by white so uh, queen has to go on d8 that's the only way and losing the queen of course is the losing the game so that's not the, uh, the option it doesn't help at all however Caruana play here uh, after rook on d6 he play rook on h8 uh, which is also of course winning uh, just a bit slower way we have rook on d8 defending and now we have queen on b3 anyway and now we have king on c7 going to the center uh, and now queen on b7 king goes to d6 but now we have rook on h6 we have f6 but now knight on e4 uh, knight is of course defended and in this position Ali Reza Firuja resigned the game there is nothing uh, to do if he moved the, the king uh, closer to the knight he gonna lose the queen uh, and he if he goes to uh, e6 then knight g5 uh, king d6 and knight f7 very fancy check and of course fork and with king and the rook king, uh, knight can't be taken uh, because it's protected by uh, by queen so it's a very very fancy way king e6 would have to be played and knight takes on d8 with check and after that uh, taking the the knight of course uh, white's winning very easily because they are up the rook so it's nothing to do here this is why in this position Ali Reza Firuja just resigned the game so he played longer than ag against Magnus Carlsen he tried uh, to play give some challenge to Fabiano Caruana yesterday he probably resigned too fast so today he tried to uh, give better defense uh, but still without the success and Jan he had uh, so great chance uh, especially 
uh, in this, uh, not in this, but in this moment, he could really, really play this uh, after Rook G1, he could really play on uh, H5. And I would like to see uh, what actually uh, Fabiana Caruana had prepared for that, because this attack of the pawns would be would be so dangerous. So that's interesting what would happen. And also I prepared the final standings after round 10. Here we go. Uh, so Fabiano Caruana has seven points out of 10. So he is the sole leader. And second is Magnus Carlsen uh, with six and a half points uh, out of 10. Uh, so pretty, pretty busy here. And Wesley so Jordan Van Forest has uh, six points. Jan Krzysztof Duda, five and a half. And Alireza Firuzia as well, five and a half points. Uh, but here, uh, look at this. For example, Alireza Firuzia lost to the top three players so far. So uh, he's very strong against uh, the, the players the, from the you know end of the table, but against the leaders, uh, he playing probably too risky like most of the young players. And uh, more interesting is that Wesley So still has to play against Magnus Carlsen. If Magnus Carlsen win that, um, he gonna be one of the two um, top players of the tournament. So it's pretty interesting. Fabiano Caruana still has a match against Jan Krzysztof Duda and against uh, Vladislav Artemiev and against uh, Kovalev. So uh, that's should be uh, okay for him. Uh, he has a big chances to win that tournament. Uh, but Jan Krzysztof Duda, uh, he is a fifth so far, very solid tournament, but he has to play against Fabiano Caruana, Magnus Carlsen and Vishwanathan Anand. So uh, two world champions and one candidate uh, from last year very tough task for Jan Krzysztof Duda. Uh, of course, we wish uh, a lot of luck for all the players and of course the skills as well. So yeah, I'm also exhausted after this game as the many lines are so complicated and I couldn't cover them all, but I try my best. Uh, so if you like this video, of course, press like. And if you don't like, press unlike. Leave the comment for me and um, definitely feel free to, to subscribe if you like my content, if you like my style of commenting. And, uh, and yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.